We're up here at Jeremy's Casa, all loaded up. We're gonna go do our little state land hunt. Jeremy and I got our XOPs, our Badlands gear. We're gonna give it a try. It's a nice afternoon. We're gonna do it. We're all taking our bows, we're all gonna knock something down. We got two trucks going, so we'll have plenty of room for some venison to bring home. Do get get 'em. So a little background on our public land hunt. Uh, John and I had prepped for a while. We, we'd been on a couple scouting missions, but we'd never set boots on the ground where we had hunted that this day on the 11th of October. And um, we got set up late. Uh, we started, packed up the trucks around 2.30 and we got in there and we didn't get fully set up till right around five o'clock. And uh, I decided to put down some mock scrapes with some Evercalm to kind of keep the deer, get the deer's attention before they caught wind of us. Uh, I set them up strategically with the wind. And I decided to call a grunt call every hour to 45 minutes. After the first grunt, I thought I had seen a deer move through the thick part of the understory and I, I couldn't get a good look, but I, I thought I had seen something anyway. And that was early in the hunt. It was probably 15, 20 minutes after we had set up. And then it came down to the last 15 minutes of shooting light and um, I let one more grunt rip and I turn about 75, 80 yards away, I see this buck coming through the understory and, and I turn to John and I go, John, there's a buck coming, get ready. And he, he goes, no, you're, you're bullshitting me. And I go, no, no, it's coming, get ready, get ready, here he comes, here he comes. And he turns and he sees his deer and he just about shit a brick. <laughs> He's all jacked up and it really makes for great video footage how it all went down. Um, so check it out and Give us a like and a follow, and continue watching Service Side. Well, we made it. We're way the hell up here. We got the sun to our backs for the most part. We're set up on what looks like a deer run, coming down off the top of the hill. Jesus. Five o'clock, we got a good hour and a half before uh, we lose light. We should have started earlier setting this up. Boy, that was a long hike in. Longer than I thought it would be. Oh, Jimmy, that one's for you, buddy. That's a good sign. I think that's good luck right there. Bro, I think we're gonna kill a deer. Black squirrel. So this is our first sit as Team Doe Getter. And uh, we're with Serviceide. Stay tuned, maybe some action will come our way real shortly.
Dude, this is what it's all about. If you don't get this feeling, yeah. you're not Bohan, man. If you don't get that shaking feeling, whew. I literally just got done tell telling Jeremy, dude. Five years. 2020 would be five years I hadn't shot a buck since Halloween of 20 or 2015. This <sighs> I'm gonna I'm gonna put us on pause. I'm gonna check the footage and we're gonna make a decision on this buck. I think we're gonna have to give him a little time just because it's bow hunting and you wanna give him due time, but I'm pretty sure we got a dead deer. Got her. Look at that blood. That's deep and red right there. I'd say that's a dead deer. I would say so. I'd hope so. Hell yeah, buddy. If not, he's going to be losing a lot of blood. Hell yeah. Got that new uh, wasp archery Havilon blade. Shot was not where we wanted it. We tracked the blood. Can't even tell you how many feet or yards. Hmm. We're gonna back out. Give it a little more time. And I know uh, a guy that has some dogs, so we're gonna get them on it. Hopefully, find it before it uh, turns into coyote food. Yeah. Find him. 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 There he is. Find him. Good boy. Good boy over here. Find him. Well, we did it. We're on the board. Team Doe Getter. Team Doe Getter. Fucking A, baby. Great New York State public land buck. If you're not already, make sure you guys go and follow, subscribe to Service Ed on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. Hopefully we'll get you guys a lot better content this year and continue on the rest of the year with all of our other staffers. All right, so your, your guide dog thingy. so we reset. Uh, we took a night off. Uh, we found last blood and marked it with Onyx, and then we came back in with my dogs Zoro and Savannah. Uh, called it in, um, and we started out with nothing to go on, other than the fact that we had seen two deer run the ridge after the shot, and I was fairly certain that one of them was the one that John shot. Um, so we started in the direction of the blood. We went to last blood, let the dogs get on first blood, went down into the gully because gut shot deer usually run to water. So we went off just that, knowing that they might be down by the creek somewhere. And we couldn't find anything. The dog didn't have any hard leads. And uh, so we went back up and we decided to pursue the line that the deer that we had seen had taken and the the dog started pulling and took it took me right to the buck so it's a big success story we're with Surfside. i'm the regional director for region three new york new jersey and i have pro john, I have john and he's he's my field pro and we made a team in an effort to do a hunt swap challenge we wanted to get together and you know, learn each other's hunting styles and kind of teach each other things. And that, that's really what Surfside's about. Basically, just listen to Jeremy and it leads you to success. <laughs> yeah, I, I, did, I did a lot of footwork for this kill. And 
I give John the opportunity to kill a buck. He hasn't killed a buck in what five, five years? years? Going on five years, yeah. First stately and public hunt I've ever actually been on, and been in a tree for any significant amount of time. And doing actually to actually see something and get a shot on a mature deer like that, it's had to be what two and a half, three years old. I say it's probably two and a half, yeah. Looking at it up close and getting our hands on it. It's a big it. body deer, but we still got some work to do. We're gonna do a little cheers to Team Doe Getter. I brought a six pack just for an occasion like this. I think we're finally in rut time and uh, I'm gonna probably hold out for a decent buck today if I can get a shot. If I can get a shot at a decent doe, I'll probably do it. If not, I'm more than content passing everything up. Um, he does a great job managing properties that he has access to. I made a little muck scrape. With some tarsal scent and some dough and heat. Cooks fatal. It's a perfect morning. We have a light. I think it's a northwest wind. Almost the exact opposite last night. It's chilly. Not quite freezing. There's a little bit of frost. And Joe's already crawling. He's in the sand that he put me in last night. And I decided to pick up a little different scenery. He's already got deer crawling all over him. But we're, uh, we're both being kind of picky. He shot his buck yesterday, so he's got doe tags to fill. And I'm, uh, I'm looking for a cull buck or a decent three plus year old deer. deer. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned. I hit him back. I think it's a liver gut shot. He's hunched up and limping really bad. I don't think he's gonna make it. But he doesn't, he's not in good shape. So I'm gonna look at the footage and see exactly where I hit him and then go from there. I'm going to walk down to the arrow and see what it looks like. We know the deer's bedded about 200 yards down the 
the line of the hedgerow and it's probably where he's going to end up being when we go get him later. There's like a 90% chance, I'm pretty sure. Unless well, somebody comes or a coyote comes and bumps him, but I'm pretty sure he's going to die there. But uh, we'll check out the arrow. I hope he just lies down and dies. There's no hole in that fence. This is a pretty bloody arrow. Well, he finally laid down. Let's say we're probably about 45 minutes after the shot. And I'm waiting for him. I'm hanging with Joe. We're just waiting for him to put his head down for good. Stay tuned. Well, we just had some breakfast. I love diner food. It's French toast and eggs and sausage. And uh, given that buck quite a, quite a bit of time, shot was just after seven. About three hours now. Yep. So we're hoping, we're gonna head back and glass him and see if he's, well, see if he's still in the bed that we left him at and to see if he's expired in that bed that we left him at. And then uh, then the work starts. So, fingers crossed. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we'll get back with you guys in a bit. We got the deer. That's it. <laughs> um, he's dead. That's he, it. He, he's, he's dead. We finished him off. But uh, punched my tag, hit him first first shooting light. Basically, it was it was just after official sunrise. I laid out an awesome little scent trap for him. For really, I didn't I I didn't know that buck was in there. I had no idea. I I was like I'm gonna try and kill a buck and I'm gonna lay this scent trap. And I had the game plan set and. It ended up working out pretty much to a T. He read the playbook, came right in, and I botched the shot. I misjudged a few things, and I rushed a little bit. I didn't rush it a lot, I rushed it a little bit, but rushing it a little bit is enough to botch it. And center punched the liver, and then ended up, I don't know, he, he stayed alive for five hours. And then we ended up going in and getting him. And I, uh, I made a follow-up shot and hit him low. I misjudged that distance. And then I finally made another bad butt kill shot. Kill follow-up shot. He he really wasn't. He would have died if we if we just let him lay until dark. I really think he would have, but the right thing to do would be just go in there and put watch. Him out. Him, and we could see him. We knew exactly where he was bedded. We watched him bed, and we watched him for an hour and a half just lay there and feng shui it up against his his little corner there. And he just he he had everything in eyesight, so he could knew he knew what was to his back and what was to his front, and ended up putting the sneak on him and finishing the job to put him out of his misery. I don't like watching deer suffer. That's not why we do this. We like clean kills as much and as often as we possibly can. We really respect the deer that we hunt and it sucks to 
to have that happen and watch the deer suffer. I actually cried a little bit this morning watching that deer bed down. And, um, and just sit, sit there and suffer, so. We've had an amazing time. We've got to know each other pretty well. Kind of, kind of learn the ins and outs of, of hunting down here and you know how, how it works and it's really it's a different animal. I'm used to wide open space, giant cornfields, deer just you know if deer see you or or get any hint that you're, you've been there, they'll go to some other cornfield and never show back up again. It, this is this is like creme de la creme, really really different. <laughs> It's really different. That's, that's the best way I can describe it. But long-winded interview. We're on the road back to his house. We're gonna get this deer hung up, and I think he's gonna go to the taxidermist. So we'll do another another video on the. Bye. Bye. <laughs> it, it's gonna make for some good footage. We're gonna we'll throw it together and of it. and. Uh, I got another one down on the ground for Team Doe Getter. <laughs>